With the upcoming eclipse on April 8th, 2024, millions of people are gonna be traveling to this thin line across North America to watch an event that will, well, make you lose your sh really? <laughs> These are the reactions on the ground. Wow. Yeah, that was me during the 2017 total solar eclipse. And I'm not alone. Find any video of people watching a total solar eclipse and you'll find a similar reaction. You know you're gonna need these solar eclipse glasses like these bad boys, but I know there's tons of other questions that people have. So I reached out to my social media followers asking you what other questions do you have about the upcoming solar eclipse? And I'm answering them here in this video. So let's get right into it. I can't see a thing through these. Am I looking at the camera? Why is this eclipse such a big deal? Don't eclipses happen like all the time? Yeah, they do, but this is a total solar eclipse. You're gonna see the moon completely block out the sun, which means it'll get dark. You'll see a 360 sunset. You'll see the sun's corona, which is the only time you can ever see that from Earth. There's an endless list of strange things that happen during a total solar eclipse, which is why everybody who has seen one says, you just have to be there. And remember, you have to be in that narrow path of totality to get that experience. Even if you're at 99% totality, you're not gonna get the same experience as you would being in the path. It's literal night and day difference. It's like going to a movie theater and sitting outside of the theater and saying, you saw the movie. No, you didn't. So why is this one a big deal? Didn't we just have an eclipse? Well, the eclipse in the USA back in 2023 was an annular eclipse. Cool to photograph and cool to see, but a completely different experience from a total solar eclipse. The eclipse that went across the US in 2017 was a total solar eclipse, and tons of people were able to witness that. And because a lot of people were able to experience totality, it made them realize they can't miss this one that's upcoming here in 2024. And unlike the one back in 2017, this upcoming one is going through tons of major cities, which means a lot of people are going to get to experience this without needing to travel. And also, this is the last total solar eclipse that's going across the mainland US for 20 years. So if you don't see this one and you don't travel for another eclipse, you're not gonna be seeing one for quite some time. Why isn't there an eclipse every month? The moon's orbit is slightly tilted, about five degrees, so sometimes the shadow cast from the moon is too high or too low to hit the Earth. But when it's just right, you get a solar eclipse. How do I take photos of the eclipse with my phone? During the partial phase of the eclipse, you can actually use your eclipse glasses as a filter, and you can hold your camera phone up to it and take photos that way. Once totality hits, you don't need a filter anymore, and you can actually snap some really cool photos with your phone of what's going on around you. Will you go blind looking directly into an eclipse? Look, if the sun's out and you're looking at it, you're gonna damage your eyes and you're gonna potentially go blind. My eyes! And an eclipse is no different, but there is one slight exception to that rule. So if you're along the path of totality, this narrow strip, the moon is actually gonna completely cover the sun, which means there's gonna be no sun for a bit. And now it's safe to look in the direction of the sun. But once totality ends, you gotta put those glasses back on if you wanna look at the sun. What happens during totality? It's hard to truly convey the feeling of what happens during totality, but let me try and paint you a picture here. Leading up to totality, the crescent sun disappears behind the moon, and as you take your glasses off, the last few rays of sunlight shine through the deep valleys of the moon, a feature known as Bailey's beads. The final beam of light shines out in a brilliant moment called the diamond ring effect, a bright flash that only lasts a brief moment. Now you're in the shadow of the moon, totality, and a black dot covers where the sun was just shining, and the glow of the corona of the sun is now visible to the naked eye, extending outwards through the sky. The horizon has a distinct orange and yellow, like that of a sunset. The word awesome finally lives up to its true meaning in those few moments of totality. As the end of totality approaches, the second and final diamond ring effect bursts into view and the sunlight begins to emerge once again. What happens if you're not in the path of totality? I urge everybody to get into the path of totality and to do everything in their power to make that so. But sometimes you just can't make that happen. You will still get a partial solar eclipse. The amount that the sun is eclipsed will depend on where you are in the world. With your eclipse glasses, you can still safely watch as the moon covers part of the sun. 
You can photograph the partial eclipse and get a cool time-lapse sequence if you decide to do that. If you look at the ground beneath a leafy tree, you'll see that the shadows created are these crescent shapes. This is a unique phenomenon that only happens during partial solar eclipses. Some people will take a colander and hold it up to the sun to see this effect happening in a more pronounced fashion. So even if you don't get to experience the total solar eclipse, you can still see a lot of strange things happening around you. Can you stay in the shadow by flying? Some flights are flying through the total solar eclipse, which is awesome, but Keep in mind, the moon's shadow is racing across the surface of the Earth at more than 1,500 miles an hour, so good luck keeping up with that. Any tips on how to correctly photograph the eclipse? This topic is a whole video on its own, and there are tons and tons of people who have created videos out there that I suggest you watch. The quick and dirty advice I can give you is keep that solar filter on your camera lens the entire time until totality hits. Once totality hits, once that diamond ring goes off, take that solar filter off and you can photograph the corona. And once that second diamond ring hits, put that solar filter back on to make sure you don't damage your sensor. Camera settings are all gonna depend on what camera and what lens you're using. For that info, I suggest you look at Mr. Eclipse's guide on photographing a total solar eclipse, which I'll link in the description below. It's written by Fred Espinact, somebody who's photographed more solar eclipses than anyone I know, and it's 100% the best and most in-depth way to figure out what you need to do to photograph one. When is the next total solar eclipse? The mainland US isn't gonna have a total solar eclipse for quite some time. But in the next 10 years, there are a couple eclipses that are happening internationally. So if you like to travel, why not make uh, a total solar eclipse the excuse to visit some of these countries? The next total solar eclipse happening is on August 12th, 2026, which will pass through the Arctic, Greenland, Iceland, and Spain. A year later, on August 2nd, 2027, Spain gets another total solar eclipse, and other countries too, including Morocco, Algeria, Libya, and Egypt. On July 2nd, 2028, Australia and New Zealand are getting one. After that, November 25th, 2030, Botswana, South Africa, and Australia, once again, gets a total solar eclipse. On March 30th, 2023, the US gets its next solar eclipse, but it's happening in Alaska, and it's also gonna pass through Russia. And on March 20th, 2034, this total solar eclipse is passing through tons of countries, including Nigeria, Chad, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, India, and China. Is it the end of times? I made a video about these eclipse conspiracies and I'll link it in the description below. And I highly recommend you check it out if you want a good laugh and you want to see what these people think. I'm telling you right now, something is not right about this eclipse. This sign is not a coincidence. It is a call to repentance. If you believe we are living in the last days, follow or subscribe now for more. What was the longest solar eclipse ever recorded? The longest solar eclipse in the last couple thousand years lasted seven minutes and 28 seconds, which was on June 15th, 743 BC. This record is set to break on July 16th, 2086, with an eclipse lasting 7 minutes and 29 seconds. Mark your calendars for that one. Because the moon is slowly drifting away from us, in about 500 million years from now, the last total solar eclipse will occur, making our current ability to witness these celestial events truly fortunate. How do I change the weather forecast? You have to do the anti-rain dance. It kind of sort of goes like this. <laughs> Stupid. That's it, everyone. Just wanted to answer a couple questions about the eclipse. Get out there and enjoy it. I hope you have a great time, and we'll see you next time. Peace.